Mr. O'Rourke, you have additional question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ambassador Crocker, I wanted to return to the, the dialogue that we had uh, earlier. Um, again, looking at the 100-year period of the, the modern Middle East and those borders and some of the dynamics were formed in the cataclysm of a dying empire and, a, and the climax of, of a, another empire. Uh, and, and right now, 100 years later, we have some extraordinarily unusual events, the, the greatest mass migration out of that region, uh, perhaps ever, uh, but certainly the greatest mass migration to Europe uh, and greatest displacement since World War II. Um, the, the attacks in Paris, um, the many failed states, three for, for certain, perhaps another uh, on, on the brink. And, and I realize it's impossible to, to answer this adequately in three and a half minutes, but if, if I boil down your answer about a strategy, it, it was to better support our friends and strengthen pre-existing relationships. And I just want to again point to Saudi Arabia uh, with all the history there and the historic meeting uh, between the Saud family and, and Roosevelt uh, in, in 45 forward. Is it time to rethink that relationship? It, should, we, should there be an additional price the Saudis pay for the implicit protection of the United States uh, in terms of accepting refugees, being a signatory to the UN uh, uh, refugee uh, compact, um, to uh, ensuring that they're not exporting this extreme fundamentalism, et cetera, et cetera, just to use Saudi Arabia as, as uh, one area. But I, I just, I, I don't think we could do more of the same uh, and expect a different result. I, I really feel if there's ever a time to rethink our approach to the Middle East, it is yesterday. And uh, would love to hear your thoughts on how we might approach that. It's, a, it's an important question, clearly. At this time of unprecedented upheaval uh, in the region and the evolution of um, uh, an Islamic State threat that I've in the past styled as Al-Qaeda 3.0, um, I, I would try to shore things up uh, right now uh, to, to reverse this really terrifying centrifugal spiral downward. And that, in my view, means working with our established partners. Um, uh, if we can get somewhere uh, to a better place, clearly a part of ongoing discussion should be, so let's sit down and look at how we how we got into the mess we were facing and are trying to resolve. And uh, I think there's an important conversation. I tried to hint at it, and I don't want to take you into the arcane weeds of Islamic theology. But um, uh, Saudi Salafism and Islamic State Jihadism uh, both go back to um, uh, the um, medieval Islamic thinker uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. Um, it, they, they split um, on the uh, concept of jihad. For, for the Salafist, it's defensive. For uh, Islamic State, it is offensive. Um, uh, but the point is, jihadism, as practiced by Islamic State, is an offshoot, if you will, of mainstream Salafism. So how is Saudi Arabia going to deal with that? Um, you know, it's the kind of discussion I don't think we often have with them, but we need to have it because eventually, as we saw in uh, the, uh, the 2003 part, time frame, you know, it comes home. The ultimate goal of Islamic State is to center the caliphate on the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. That's, uh, that's what they're all about. So in the process of shoring up a region, relying on our traditional relationships, we need to have that conversation. But I would not at this, this stage, certainly, 
suggest that we give them an or else, uh, because the relationship is as frayed as I've seen it, frankly. Of all the disturbing things I've seen over this last year, one of the most disturbing is something Lou remarked, and that was the fact that the Saudis decided to launch an air campaign into Yemen without consulting with us. And, and yet we are helping them uh, without going into specifics. I mean, there, there's some cooperation there. And I, I'm out of time. I appreciate the Chairman's indulgence. Thank you for your answers. Appreciate it. Great. Mr. Ashford. 